Hey, welcome back. It's been quite some time since I posted about a circuit concept. To get the ball rolling again, I thought, let's revisit the simple common source amplifier and see how we can enhance its bandwidth. We may then utilize this same simple concept to more complex circuits. I'll give out a common example towards the end of the video, so stay tuned. Before we proceed, I'd like to highlight that the reference for this video is the bandwidth extension article by Dr. Ali Shekhul Islami. So let's assume that we have a common source amplifier as shown. It might be trivial for you to analyze its transfer function, but for the sake of completeness, let's do it. R out and C out can be readily identified as RL parallel with R naught and CL parallel with CGD. We'll next look at the short circuit output current to draw the Norton's equivalent. In the shown polarity, the short circuit output current is simply minus Gm times Vn plus Vn times SG, uh, CGD. The transfer function can then be derived from the Norton's equivalent which would come out to be minus Gm R out times 1 minus S CGD over Gm divided by 1 plus S C out R out. We can observe the same kind of a RHP0 as seen in Miller compensated op amps. We can also see that the 3 dB bandwidth is at omega equals to 1 by R out C out. Now the question is, how can we increase this bandwidth? Firstly, why would you want to? Well, because we can get the same DC gain for a larger range of frequencies. So for instance, the signal of interest can possibly, possibly be at a higher frequency, allowing for high speed operation. We saw that the bandwidth depends upon R out and C out. R out directly affects the DC gain. So let's not think about that. One possibility is that if we can lower C out by adding a circuit that provides a negative capacitance in the small signal sense, then we could effectively increase the bandwidth. That can indeed be done by using a cross-coupled pair. However, let's look at another way, in which if we add a zero that compensates the gain reduction due to the output pole due to CL, then we could possibly boost the bandwidth. Graphically, the Bode gain plot for the zero would be something like this. So if we add this on top of the existing Bode plot of the common source amplifier, then we can essentially boost the bandwidth as shown here. A similar technique is commonly utilized in continuous time linear equalization, CTLE. There's an interesting article about it in the IEEE solid state circuits magazine as well. There can be multiple ways to add a zero. Let's look at one of them here. If we analyze this circuit, we can see that for DC, where the capacitor CGS is open, the input impedance is 1 by Gm in parallel with R0, which is approximately 1 by Gm. And for higher frequencies where the capacitor is shorted, the effective impedance is R0 in parallel with this R. So if we design the circuit with the R, which is much greater than 1 by Gm, then we can have an output impedance that increases with frequency. And that can possibly compensate for the gain reduction due to the pole. So if you do the entire maths and analyze the circuit to compute the input impedance, you will notice that the impedance is of the form. So what you'll have to do is you'll have to apply a test voltage and then compute the test current and divide the test voltage Vt over It to get the output impedance, which would be of the form R0 upon 1 plus Gm R0, whole, this whole thing multiplied by 1 plus SCGS R over 1 plus SCGS R plus R0 over 1 plus Gm R0. For frequencies greater than 1 by R CGS and lesser than 1 by CGS uh, times R plus R0 over 1 plus Gm R0, the impedance offered by the circuit is inductive and can be approximated as 1 by Gm 
times SCGS R. In summary, we can use this block to increase the impedance with frequency to compensate for the 20 dB per decade roll-off in gain attributed to the output pole due to CL. Well, if you made it so far and found the video intriguing, I'd urge you to check out these videos next. See you in the next one and happy learning.